And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Caitlyn LeBlanc. Had a uh, donation to build a new Caitlyn deck, basically. Um, you know, Caitlyn Teemo, of course, is the most popular Caitlyn deck by far. Um, and you can do that with either Freljord or Bandle City. I kind of like Freljord with Caitlyn Teemo right now because you can have your different Frostbite spells for all these larger units in, in Demacia and everything. Um, but, you know, wanted to do something different. Uh, we did play Caitlyn Viego. Um, maybe like two weeks ago now or so and I really liked that deck with Caitlin Viego I know a lot of y'all on YouTube really like that one too so that was a cool one so we could do that again for just another unique uh, Caitlin deck you know could, we could just replay that Caitlin Viego but I wanted to do something different so um, you know gonna gonna try Caitlin LeBlanc basically go in Caitlin Tribeam and Probulator and people have definitely done this with like Ezreal and Draven mostly before um, but I don't like Draven as much after the nerf and Ezreal, I don't love in this Demacia world with sharp sights everywhere and single combats um, and just challengers because Ezreal's so small. Uh, so yeah, so I don't love Ezreal there. So we're going to try LeBlanc instead. I think LeBlanc should be better against challengers, um, you know, being five power basically trades, you know, can trade with Screeching Dragon better against Shivana, that kind of stuff. Um, so we're going to go in LeBlanc, Glory Seeker, Kato, you know, that those kind of cards also. Um, and then like Thorn of the Rose. Another good card with Tribeam. And so, you know, kind of going with the Piltover and Zon, Noxus, Tribeam deck, uh, but going a little bit different with it. Playing Pharaoh's Financier for our other two drop, um, instead of, you know, there could be other cards like Ballistic Bot, House Spider, things like that, but I like Financier making those six plus cost spells. Uh, figure like these different, uh, like just Flash Bomb Traps and these different damage removal spells could actually be good for LeBlanc, because LeBlanc needs to see you deal 15 damage to level up. But that damage can come in any way. And so, like, the Flash Bomb Traps do count as damage. Or, like, Thermogenic Beam could be a lot of damage. Uh, stuff like that. Kato the Arm seems pretty awesome with Caitlyn. Uh, you know, Caitlyn's already quick attack. So, get that plus, plus three, plus zero overwhelm. Should be really good with both of our champions. Um, and then one Captain Farron to try to finish the, the job. So, let's see how this deck does. You know, be kind of something new. Kind of something a little different. But still similar, right? You know, like, it's still going to be kind of familiar with Noxus, Piltover, and Zon. Uh, go up here. There we go. Noxus, Piltover, and Zon, and Tribeam. But instead of, like, Draven Ezreal, it's Caitlyn LeBlanc. So, honestly, a pretty good hand. I think we'll send the Thorn of the Rose back. Um, you know, without having a Ravenous Flock, we really need to keep that. And Arachnoid Sentry both. Maybe not. Built over Peacemakers. Alright, so we're going to use a Pilt over Peacemaker on the the 1 2. Give them some Flash Bomb Traps, because who knows? Maybe it's a Flash Bomb Trap on top that would kill one of these. I guess Lurkers are pretty nice against. Ah, oh, I didn't get it. I guess the good thing about Lurkers against Flash Bomb Traps is that if they have uh, the ways to um, shuffle the deck, then they can kind of shuffle around those Flash Bomb Traps. They're not just on top. Oh, no. We killed the, killed the wrong one. That Like that card. So that will uh, shuffle all the Flash Bomb Traps. Um, let's actually... Let's see. I guess we want to just simply... Ah, eh, we'll still do this. I say we could just we just probably want to block the caller, but I guess it doesn't really matter which one we block with the sentry if we're gonna be killing one anyway. Um, uh, haven't played very much since the new expansion came out and, and reset ranks since the season started, so my rank still I guess it'd be what, diamond then? Yeah, since the season reset, so we're taking nine. That's a lot. All right, so we know they have Rek'Sai on top, so we're definitely saving the Sentry for the Rek'Sai. So I'm never gonna play the Sentry. Well, now we have another Sentry. So. Who gets All right, we'll go Kato. Cool. 
When we look ahead, we know how to prepare. Listen to me! Now we wait. Lots of predicting. Hey, LeBlanc. Run right side back on top. Alright, so I think this is just our best play. Stun that, block there, play LeBlanc attack. That call the pack's also pretty nice for um for you know making sure they don't have it get any traps also. Alright, so yeah, so just doing the pill cover peacemaker right there so that our overwhelm damage will kill them. Obviously we have the mystic shot as well uh, for backup, but I'm just going with that. So good first win. Now we got Timo Swain. We're probably not going to draw against Timo Swain again. <laughs> probably not. Uh, uh, I don't know. I guess we could keep all that. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with Kato either. Keep Kato. So they do have round one Timo. We got the Thermo. So we want to have Thermo Beam be three mana, if possible. So we're gonna do that plus flock. Ooh, plus Death's Hand. LeBlanc or Caitlyn? The best lies are beautiful. So I'm worried about lecturing Yordle, right? Like if I go if I go Caitlyn, then they go lecturing Yordle, then I don't get to attack. But then you know LeBlanc's obviously pretty vulnerable to different one damage spells. Oh. Tri beams are doing four right now. It's not bad. I mean, I could play Caitlyn and then three mana thermogenic beam, and then these things do six, or I just six mana thermo. I, mean, I guess and just have lecturing Yordle and Kato trade, because thermo is like something that can kill a Leviathan later. Then again, yeah, these things are super close to being able to kill lecturing Yordle. All right, I don't, I don't hate trading, just trading Kato and lecturing Yordle. I guess I don't hate it. We have a very awkward amount of mana with 7 mana next rounds. Pot on the train. So drawing the other Caitlyn mean you know, I went this route. Let us take a peek at life beneath the wave. Now we wait. 
They haven't drawn any. Yeah, they haven't drawn any of the flash bombs yet. Like we even played the Piltover Peacemaker before. They haven't drawn any yet. There's one. Ooh. I'm not taking give it all. We're taking either assembly line or hex tech anomaly. Like assembly line's pretty good, but you know, hex tech anomaly has some um, really high upside. I think I'm gonna take that. If it's a people problem, I'm your man. Carry on. Two, three, four. All right, so tribeam's only five. Yeah, now it can be some shenanigans for sure. <laughs> this is the give it all. I was like, I don't want the give it all. Alright, well I guess we have to cast a tri-beam. Okay. Tarkaz is what's up. Oh no! Dude, these poison darts have been crazy good. So that's their third poison dart, right? And those things have been crazy good. I don't really know why they're attacking like this. Like, I don't... But I'm fine with it. Like, they could have just had that 2-1 not die. Not by a long shot. Not by a long shot. Bring these lands to their okay. So we're going to... One mana left. I guess we're, we're going to kill Leviathan. Yeah, we're going to do this on Leviathan. Yeah, I'm worried about like the, you know, the Ravenous flock, but they can't really flock... Zephyr Sage? Ugh, that's maybe the worst 6-drop there is. I need just a moment. Not expecting them to have any more. Man, I don't even know. If, man, that Zephyr Sage was pretty bad. I don't even know if I should. I guess I don't even think I should do that, should I? Trade there. Like I am like pretty positive this Swain's gonna be dying to a a uh, flash bomb here. They have another one damage spell. Or is that just, that's, maybe just, an, I guess that's just another flock. Because we gave them, yeah, like, we gave them a good amount of flash bombs earlier and they did not die to those flash, or like, you know, they had been drawing those flash bombs. I want a mini-morph that. Guess we mini-morph. So we know they have another Ravenous Flock in hand, out of their four cards. I could also stop drawing Puff Caps. I've drawn a ton of Puff Caps. I have not very many. I've drawn a ton. Yeah, it was, it was Hex Tech Anomaly, so I couldn't just like keep any morph around because it was just gonna turn into another random spell the next round. Destination in sight. Well, that's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, there wasn't really any reason to attack with the Tarkaz because it just it dies to the flock if I attack with it, and then so like I attack with Tarkaz, they flock it. We know that they have a flock from what they did earlier, um, and so then after that, now my Zephyr Sage and my Caitlyn are both injured, and so then they get hit by flocks and stuff like that. It just wasn't any reason to really. Man, still no flash bombs. Oh man, I really needed them to draw two flash bombs. All right, too many Leviathans. 
Oh, Leviathan's good, and I did a terrible job drawing Puffcaps. So, death by poison dart. Okay, back to an opponent that's not playing Poison Dart, so happy about that. We got Lurkers again. Okay, a Tri Beam. Could be difficult to have 3 damage Tri Beam. For the tri beam, or sorry, three three, three mana thermo beam for the tri beam. Uh, I think we're doing three and three. If it's a people problem, I'm your man. Wow, two rounds and three lurks. Watch your toes. Doesn't get too much better than that. <laughs> Three rounds and five lurks? Are you kidding me? Lurked five times in the first three rounds of the game. I'm scared of them having another one of the, the two mana cards that give a free attack. Only at three. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. I obviously do not want that card and LeBlanc to trade. Like, if, if LeBlanc's gonna die, I want LeBlanc to actually trade with one of them. Surprised it wasn't a Rek'Sai. Even though we know they have two in hand. Alright, so my Whisper Words is at three out of four. And I have to save the two mana there, right? Like, I don't want to play Glory Seeker. And then again, they play the free attack card. It's not a great challenge, but it helps enable my whisper words. Four. Is this going to do six? Yes, it will. What is up? Wow. That worked out pretty good. Wait, what? What is this thing? Oh. Four or five. Get a okay, all right. Well, I guess that's a card. <laughs> it's like, what's this thing? So Kyle will play this Thermo Beam because then it grows the Tri Beam, but I guess Thermo Beam's like a good one to keep also. So if we attack like that, we have they block Kato, I would think. So they should still have two Rek'Sai's, right? 
I think. Oh, that's not good. So these other two cards are both Rek'Sai, right? I'm pretty sure. Now, obviously, we know what that card is. Yeah. So they have to do Call the Pack to make two other cards because they don't really have anything. They don't have other options. So both those Rex are gone. We know what that top card is going to be again. Oh, we do know that they get to get to challenge here. So that's going to do. So that's going to be a nine. Or this is a ten six. So they've got six overwhelm coming in. So I think we have this. Because, yeah, like, because we already know that they're drawing that other lurker. So they lurked five times in the first three rounds, and we still won. How about that? Tribeam and Probulator. Good card. Two and one. I think my opponent may have had the tools to win that. Now that, you know, kind of thinking about it, if... Like, the, the time that we shot their thing and we were going to attack with our, our two attackers, and then they used the uh, Bone Skewer to put it back on top, that just kind of locked them out of the game, you know? Like, that's whenever we really won, when they just had two Rek'Sai's eyes and that card they are drawing. If they just, like, take that big hit, let that die, take the big hit, play the, the next round, they play the Rek'Sai, we stun it, but then they have the Rek'Sai go back on top and then play the new Rek'Sai, then now I can't stun it again. Maybe that new Rek'Sai could have killed us, especially with the other Rek'Sai on top. And then, you know, leveling up and stuff. Anyway. Well, we got Yasuo Kennen. I don't know. I don't really see anything to mulligan. Like, you know, Glory Seeker's fine. But, you know, we do want three mana spells with a Tri-Beam. I don't really know what to do there. Okay, let's just pass. Okay. I'm gonna just keep my three spell mana with my Piltover Peacemaker instead of playing the Pharaoh's Financier. <laughs> Ready for a 30 round game? I don't I don't think this game's gonna take 30 rounds. We'll probably win or lose. Before that, it may feel depending on what they do with Kennen, it may feel like it, you know, if it's a whole bunch of Kennens coming back and forth. May feel like 30 rounds. Um, I think the question was, have you tried Pantheon? I think that was the question. And yeah, I like Pantheon. I mean, can, I, mean I guess we could kind of be a Reckoning deck. Kind of. Not really. I guess it's just Shock Blast. I don't know, a couple of Legion Marauders is cool too. You think I should take Reckoning? But like, I don't have any 5 plus power things right now. So I'm not exactly sure how or when I would get them. I don't know, they like retreat return the eye of the dragon and now they get a draggling. And I use a ton of mana to kill that thing. What is gained when we return malevolence? Scoping the area. I need just a moment. Follow the wind, but watch your back. Oh. 
That card's probably gonna be tough to kill. Let's investigate. For glory, face me. Got a bunch of Yasos over there. Yeah, they they played um, Solari Priestess that went and got a Ridden Stars. The Ridden Stars got this three mana six six Yasuo. Hoping we get some flash bomb luck. They got five flash bombs, they could just draw three and have them all kill the Yasuo. That'd be nice. Okay, well, let's get in there. That's a good thing about Caitlyn's champion spell. Breathe in, breathe out. Hey, Scar. Our main reaper. That's probably the last eye of the dragon. Probably the third one coming in. Time to make an appearance. That's my guess. What is gained when we return malevolence? Hmm. Wonder what they drew. All right, no more Eye of the Dragons. Sure, I don't exactly have a removal spell right now for Yasuo. I do have the Scorched Earth if we can figure out some something else, but uh, you know those Eye of the Dragons just get them so much time. Death is like the wind, always by my side. I don't like buying them so much time. Hmm. Death on a blade's edge. That's not as great. That's not very good. Yeah, that was kind of my plan, right? It's like pass here and then like next round, like stun, stun, attack with that, you know, attack out. That was kind of the plan. Oh really? No flash bomb traps there? We couldn't just like put one on Yasuo that I could score short that. <laughs> Silly stream of year against Ionia, you don't get to have fun. I don't know if that's exactly how it works, but Yay! Done. Got that thing out of here. I guess the problem is if they have another one. Uh. 
Yeah, so so good. Yeah, now they have another one that gets a stun. When your Yasuo deck has Yasuo, it looks really good, and my opponent had three Yasuos. This is the third. Well, I guess it's only two, but I guess one got recalled. I guess it's only two, but one, one was recalled. Good game. Alright, so two and two. All right, and thralls. We got two score shirts in here for th for some thralls. Have that right? Yeah, two score shirts in here. I'll still keep Caitlyn, I guess, but I could even see like just sending Caitlyn back also, just because of how important it is to find score shirt. Yeah, Yasuo will look great for them. Yeah, Yasuo, anytime Yasuo's in play, Yasuo looks great. You know, if you play Yasuo deck and you have Yasuo, you, you have a really high win percentage. It's it's the kind of card that people are like, you know, you gotta, you know, everybody asks for Yasuo to be buffed, but it's it's one of the very best cards in the game. It really is. The problem is, is how do you win games with Yasuo decks when you don't have Yasuo? That's the problem. It, like, the card Yasuo is amazing. It's what, what are we doing when you don't have Yasuo? I don't really like any of these options. I don't know. We're gonna like glorious evolution them. Eh. That doesn't seem great in a in a tribeam deck. They're gonna just strengthen numbers. Eh. I don't know. I guess. Awesome day for progress. She kicks, huh? All things grow cold. But everything went really well for them that game, you know? Like, they had their Solari Priestess go, you know, they had Triple Eye of the Dragon, they had Solari Priestess go find the Written in Stars, which drew Yasuo and not Kennen. Um, you know, things just went really well for them that game, and they won, so. GG's. It's tough playing Sentry. No, we, we gotta do it. Yeah, grow these improbulators. We can flock. You know, it's, I was gonna say it's tough doing this because like avalanche, but we just gotta do it. Man, I wish we had scorched earth. I really hope they don't have Talia, because if they have Talia and get to copy that, you know, obviously it's GG's, but... I guess I should have sent the Caitlyn back also, because we just got to find Scorch Earth in this matchup. Yeah, it's the only card that matters. And they have Talia, so great hand opponent. Man, I th I feel like our deck was really good. It, it actually felt really good, but we're about to be 2 and 3, but our, our deck was pretty awesome. <laughs> I guess that doesn't... I don't know if that's any solace. And but our death, our deck was felt really good. Victory requires a sharp blade. You are mine. So this will put him down to three. Oh, that saves him five life right there. Great ice shard. Great ice shard. So I guess I try beam here. Yeah, I think we have to. I don't know. It's not like Tali is not that big of a threat, right? It's just going to be all these eight eights that are about to come down. Like those are the threats. I don't know how we stop that. I guess. No. Oh, it has to be a 6 plus cost spell from our regions. Um, I can't hit, like, harsh winds. <laughs> Hextech Transmogulator? If it's a people problem, I'm your man. I can turn an 8 8 into a 2 2. I can stun another 8 8. No, I can't, because they just open attack. 
I, I did the draw two looking for a Scorcher of the course. That would kill two of these 8-8s. Eight Alright, so 1-8-8 turns into a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, we're like, block, block, block. And, yeah, we're still just super dead. Yeah, so, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, I think our, our deck actually felt really good and everything, but sometimes your opponents just have better hands, and, and their deck works a little bit better. And so, you know, we went two and three. I would be pretty comfortable just playing all of those same matchups again and going four and one. You know, we draw one Scorched Earth, and, like, that game's a win. You know, after they promising future and before Talia, we scorched Earth. You know, that's that's just kind of how it goes, right? I, I liked our deck though. I think it it looked pretty good and played pretty good. Um, I I think that game, you know, the game four against the Yasuo deck, I, you know, that was a difficult game. I could have made some different decisions. I took aggressive lines. It didn't work out. They had they had good uh, defense to to stop me, and so I didn't I didn't keep removal for Yasuo. I was using my removal, you know, on on like the Eye of the Dragons and stuff like that trying to get aggressive but it didn't work out yeah and that one was really close right like they like that even that last game like even for having you know like lissandra into prom promising future into uh talia and getting all those 80s like that if they don't have that ice shard we're winning that game right like that ice shard saved them see they just don't have that but tribeam looked good and both champions look pretty good and everything like that. And then, you know, we we also just had the really super unlucky game against um, the Lecturing Yordle making uh, whatever the name of that card is that it makes. That I, I never remember the name of that card. Um, but y'all know what I'm talking about. The Poison Dart. There we go. Poison Dart. My opponent had five Poison Darts and needed all of them. Like, all those Poison Darts were so clutch, especially the last one. But, you know, one Lecturing Yordle making two and then just naturally had the three Poison Darts. Like, they were dead if they didn't have a Poison Dart. Um like expect that last one but they did and then so you know five poison darts give us 15 puff caps and even though we have you know started with what 31 cards in our deck or so 30 maybe more than that like 33 cards in our deck whenever they started casting poison darts even 15 total puff caps and we have a lot more cards than that we still drew what seven or eight of those puff caps and that's what really you know helped kill us like just all those puff caps from poison dart um so got some pretty bad luck with that one. So really all of those, like, you know, I, I could definitely see winning two of those three losses if we just run them back, same matchups and everything, get the hands. I think I would be pretty happy with that. So I could I could definitely see this being, you know, four and one there. But that's that's the thing. I want to show y'all real games, how the real games play out. You don't always win, right? You know, any five game sample size could look could look better or worse. But I think the deck felt really smooth. It felt powerful, it felt consistent. And those are all really good attributes, and felt like we had good removal. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it. So uh, give it a try yourself if you're looking for something a little different again. You know, like that's what we like to do here: build decks that are a little different. I, like I said, I think this one felt very good. Uh, so you can't always just look at the record, right? So I know some people will just like go and look at the record in the, in the top left, and then from there determine if the deck's good or not. Uh, you gotta also, you know, watch the games if you can. If you don't, if you don't have time for that, gotta watch. Uh, at least like the the conclusions thing here because sometimes we'll go like 4-1 with the deck and i'll be like eh, i don't know about that one we just kind of got really lucky and our opponents didn't really do anything and sometimes we go 2-3 like with this one where i'm like man this deck actually felt really good and um you know we this was like a 2-3 that um wasn't too far away from a 5-0 <laughs> it wasn't um you know not if we don't get the bad puff cap luck you know if we you know if we just get like normal puff cap luck and we don't get bad puff cap luck or if they don't have like the third poison dart if we draw, you know, and we could win that one. If we just draw a Scorched Earth, we could have won that one. And then that other one, you know, triple Eye of the Dragon, uh, and then multiple Yasuos. Um, you know, like that that one wasn't the best of luck either for us, but that one was really close. That one could have gone our way. So yeah, there we go. All right, so uh, that's that's life though, right? Sometimes the games go your way, sometimes they don't. All right, that's enough for, for Caitlin LeBlanc. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. Try the deck out. Leave those comments. Let me know how it works for you. Hopefully, uh, you get a little bit better luck, but hopefully y'all enjoy it. Because this, this deck did feel pretty good. I think I liked these two with Tribeam more than Draven Ezreal right now. All right, but uh, that's it for this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.